All right, glad to see you. Good morning. I'd like to call the meeting of the Water Parks and Wildlife Committee to order. We will start as a subcommittee uh, as we lack a uh, quorum, but uh, we have a lot of work to do today. And I know that uh, Senator Pavley has asked her colleagues if uh, they would graciously allow her to, uh, to go as she has to chair a committee. And so, Senator Pavley, please join us. Uh, no, none of my colleagues agreed. <laughs> oh, is that right? I just want to make sure. I want to make sure it's your colleagues who, uh, you know, no, I'm I'm being strong armed by Senator Pavley to allow this. <laughs> Please. I yeah. could never win an arm wrestle. <laughs> pointless. Well, thank you for being here on time. Thank you. Um, this is uh, one bill, uh, Chair. 1089. Right? 1089. Relatively simple bill with no opposition. Well. Um, those of you who don't know, the Wildlife Conservation Board um, does an amazing job of acquiring resources and habitat lands. These are mostly in rural areas, deserts and mountains and things like that. But what you may not know is it has only three voting members, and they're all appointed by the governor. They're the president of the Fish and Game Commission, mm -hmm. the director of the Fish and Wildlife Department, and the director of finance. So this bill has two provisions. First, and they have a hard time sometimes reaching quorums with only having three members and sort of all in the same thought process. But first, it allows the director of finance to appoint a designee, like an alternate. This should help the Wildlife Conservation Board achieve a quorum, which at times has had a hard time obtaining. Second, the bill allows for the appointment of two public members. This is the major part of the bill, additional two public members consistent with numerous other public bodies. The bill provides for one appointment from Senate rules and one appointment by the Speaker of the Assembly. Um, I also would be glad to, um, of course, uh, accept the one amendment as proposed by your staff. It deletes the provision about finance being able to send a designee. I did not realize, but finance can do that. Now, for all boards, it is on, so we don't need that provision. So all good to go. No opposition to the bill, and the bill is supported by the Trust for Public Land and Pacific Forest Trust. And the governor is going to love the dilution of his influence? Uh, he gets three out of five. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's, uh, let's uh, achieve quorum here. We'll call the roll. That's a majority. Levine? Uh, present. Gallagher? Here. Vigolo? Present. Dodd? Eggman, Christina Garcia, Eduardo Garcia, Gomez, Harper, Present. Lopez, Here. Mathis, Medina, Here. Olson, Here. Salas, Williams. Eight. All right, we have eight, which is good to uh, get rolling as uh, a committee. Any questions or comments for uh, the senator? Motion by Mr. Dodd, second by Ms. Lopez. Any support witnesses? I don't think that it works. Any opposition? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll bring this back. For any closing comments, uh, Ms. Pavley, would you like to close? No, I think the legislative participation in this important committee is uh, well advised, and um, hopefully the governor will agree as well. All right, the motion is due pass as amended. I recommend and I vote. Uh, let's call the roll. Motion is to pass as amended to the Committee on Appropriations. Levine? Aye. Levine, aye. Gallagher? No. Gallagher, no. Bigelow? No. Bigelow, no. Dodd? Yes. Dodd, aye. Eggman? Christina Garcia? Eduardo Garcia? Gomez? Harper? No. Harper, no. Lopez? Aye. Lopez, aye. Mathis? Medina? Aye. Medina, aye. Olson? No. Olson, no. Solis, Williams. Four to four. All right, the vote is four to four. We'll keep the roll open to uh, add Thank some you votes very, later. Very much. Thank you, Ms. Pavley. Next, we have Senator Wolk. Thank you very much for your patience this morning. It's it's nine oh seven. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. It's earlier than some of the committees that I serve on. <laughs> Thank you for the consideration. <laughs> All right, so first you'll, uh, you'll take up 554, and then uh, you have uh, 1340, if that's the order you'd, you'd like. Yes, Perfect. that would Thank be you. fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, good morning. 
Um, I'm here to ask for the re- the permanent removal of the sunset, which uh, exists on the Delta Levy Subventions Program that has to do with the cost shares. The program began in 19, 1973. 1973 it began. In 198, there were very few projects that were brought to fruition with the 50-50 split at that point. In 1988, the cost share was changed to 75-25. That's 28 years ago. There have been three sunset bills since. When we put a sunset on a bill, it's to see if the program works. The program has been very successful. The PPIC mentioned that in one of their recent studies. But the evidence is the amount of money, local money, that has gone into protecting the levies. Prior to the 75-25 split 28 years ago, you had very few projects, somewhere between an average of um, 4 and 12 a year, with, with probably a total of $700,000 <coughs> put invested. After that, you have an average of 55 to 65 projects a year for a value of local investment somewhere between 3 and $22 million. This is an incredibly good program. It doesn't need a sunset any longer. Why remove the sunset? You need to remove the sunset because, these pro- first of all, the program's working. And you have a situation where the program itself, the projects are put together between the local partners and the state. There is always, with respect to each project, uh, an analysis of the, of the financial ability to pay. There has to be. That's the way the program is designed. That's the way the projects are put together by DWR. Why is this important? Well, in the, in the Delta, we have um, 1,100 miles um, of levies. Some are project levies, which are the state responsibility, and the vast majority are privately held. It is one system. If you have floods, you cannot tell the distinction between private and public. It is in the, in the state interest. It, it is the state's interest to make sure that there is a robust levy system that will protect one, the water supply of the state water project, the Central Valley project, Contra Costa. East Bay Mud, San Francisco PUC, and even intakes um, that are protected by the Delta levees. You also have state highways. You have Highway 4, you have Highway 12, you have railways, you have gas lines, you have gas storage facilities, you have roads, you have cities. You have important habitat for Delta smelt, salmon, and other aquatic species. So there's no way that state has is going to give up that interest in making certain that the investment remain in this program. Three sunsets, it costs $40,000 a bill, probably more now, um, since 1988 to extend the sunset. The sunset's there to see if it works. It's been a rousing success. I ask for you to remove the sunset. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Wolk. Witnesses? Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, Bob Reeb with Reeb Government Relations on behalf of the California Central Valley Flood Control Association and support. I would just follow on uh, the excellent opening statement by Senator Wolk to to make a, a number of points. The state of California secured the services of an independent third party called M Cubed in 2007 to conduct an ability to pay analysis. Uh, and the Delta Stewardship Council had a fellow conduct a similar analysis in 2014. Both found clearly that while urban local agencies that partake in this program could afford a 50-50 cost-sharing formula, the rural districts, those which protect agriculture and other infrastructure that currently does not provide assessment revenues for this purpose, could not. And as Senator said, this is a unified system down there where if you lose one levy, it it places tremendous pressure on the surrounding levies. Um, And so I find that, you know, I represent a lot of different clients up and down the state, including Southern California water districts. I just have to say I find it a bit ironic 
or perhaps more than ironic, that Southern California water districts that are telling the state of California that the levees are crumbling and, and in bad shape and that they have to be uh, build this twin tunnels project in order to protect water quality, oppose this bill, which primarily keeps those levees intact from a maintenance and rehabilitation standpoint. The other argument you may hear is that the Delta Levy Investment Strategy is being prepared by the Delta Stewardship Council and we should wait. Well, we've waited a number of times, including the Delta Risk Management Study, and, uh, and the bottom line is that this program can be amended by the legislature in any given year after the DL DLIS is complete, if they have recommendations with respect to cost sharing formula or programs. Frankly, we believe that the Delta Levy Investment Strategy is going to look more closely at improvements to protect the type of infrastructure like state highways and transmission lines and natural gas facilities that currently do not provide assessment revenue for this type of purpose. So we think it's a good bill, one that's long overdue, and we would encourage an I vote. Mr. Chairman, other members, Paul Yoder, I think all the uh, salient points in support have already been made by the Senator and Mr. Reeb. So on behalf of Sacramento County, San Joaquin County, Solano County, and the Delta Counties Coalition, just urge your I vote on this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? Your, your, your name, your organization, and your position, please. Good morning. Karen Keene on behalf of the California State Association of Counties in strong support. Good morning. Marlene Dumain with the East Bay Municipal Utility District, also in support. Good morning. Danny Merkler with the California Farm Bureau Federation in support. Thank you. Are there any witnesses in opposition? Good morning, Mr. Chair, committee members. Jonathan Clay on behalf of Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. Uh, we have an opposed and less amended position on this bill. Um, it's interesting listening to the testimony. Our main concern with this bill has to do with lifting the sunset. We think that sets a very high bar by continuing this 75% level of subsidy out into the future forever. Uh, we do think that allowing time for the Delta Stewardship Commission to bring their uh, report to the legislature on the investment strategy makes sense. It gives the legislature the ability to look at what are the priorities for those investments, to weigh the policy, and the legislature may decide that at that point with that information that it does make sense. Um, just in going back to the study that uh, Mr. Reed mentioned related to the fellow, these are not small dollars that we're talking about when you add it up. From fiscal year 09 to 013, just in that period alone, you had expenditures of 162 million. Bond funds available going into the future total nearly half a billion dollars. 450 million is available currently in uh, existing bonds plus Prop 1. When you look at the needs assessment, there's a delta difference of between 1.3 billion to 3 billion. So it makes sense that the legislature would want to weigh the priorities for those investments to get the most bang for your buck as you're looking at this. You know, MWD will probably be a beneficiary of this program at some point. We understand their, the importance of this program. It's not lost on us, the, the value of the delta. But we do think, especially given the uh, impending study, that there needs to be some sort of look back for the legislature to weigh the policy. And we think having a sunset, whether it's 2020, 2021, giving four or five years for the report to be to the legislature, for the legislature to weigh it, we think makes very good sense. Um, and just to kind of add on, I think one thing that we would also like to see is some assessment on ability to pay. You know, uh, the, there was reference to this 2007 study. Uh, the best that we've ever been able to find is a document that references it, but we have not been able to find that study. We've been able to find previous studies. So with that, that closes my uh, concerns. Thank you, Mr. Clary. Any uh, questions for the witnesses? Uh, oh, there, there are more opposition witnesses. Thank please, you, uh, your name, your organization, your position, please. Thank you. Beth Olasso on behalf of Inland Empire Utilities Agency and Cucamonga Valley Water District in opposition. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, Ron Davis on behalf of Eastern Municipal Water District, also in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Ms. Eggman, did you have a question? Uh, I just wanted to, uh, and if the motion has not been moved yet, I, I will move the bill. Um, I'm a Is there proud. A second for that. I'm a proud co-author. by Ms. Eggman, second by Ms. Olson. All right. I'm a proud co-author on this bill, uh, and uh, as always, appreciate Senator Wolk's leadership throughout her her uh, time in this body. Um, and, and and this just makes sense. I mean, no nobody. I mean, everybody who points, everybody who wants to fix the Delta for us, all talk about the the peril. The danger, the peril. So this is a program that's in place, that's working. Um, there is no question in anybody's mind that the levees must be maintained. Um, and to keep coming back and asking for permission or seeing how it works, uh, I think, uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, and you know, and of course, it's interesting that that the only people who are objecting to this are, are downstream people, for whom the levees are the very lifeblood that keeps their water going. And and I, I don't know if the position will change if uh, the sale of the three islands ever go through and you become one of our closer neighbors, um, maybe it changes then. But uh, I think this is a very important bill. I think it makes sense. I think it, it saves us having to come back and, and do the sunset again and again. The program is uh, effective. It's evaluated. Um, and I, I'm, I, I just think it's a good common sense policy. Thank you, Ms. Eggman. Ms. Olson. Thank you. Just to echo the comments of my colleague, I think this is a good bill. I'm proud to support it today. And I would also remind the committee and the opposition that sunsets are initially placed on initial legislation so that we can review whether it's good policy. We've done that not once, but we've now done that three times, and it's never been suggested by the legislature or the governor that it hasn't been workable good policy. So at some point, you know, the purpose of a sunset goes away. And I would argue after over 20 years, that purpose is long gone. So I would encourage the opposition to rethink their opposition as and if the bill moves forward, because, again, the purpose of having a sunset has been accomplished, and it's time to move forward. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Mr. Gallagher. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted on this bill, and, and I'll tell you why. So as you know, Senator, I've... I represent a district that has a lot of levees, mm -hmm. uh, flood control, very important part of my district, uh, served on the Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency and the Sutter Butte Flood Control Agency on two different uh, boards dealing with flood control issues. Uh, Prop 1E was, was great for us and able to you know, make capital improvements to many of our levee systems mm -hmm. uh, in the Sacramento Valley. Um, but under that program, it was the... the, the uh, status quo was 30 percent cost share and then you got to go to 25 percent if you were a disadvantaged community and you could show that and for a lot of uh, maintenance districts um, they don't have that same 25 percent cost share that we've done here in the delta um, i think it's a good point that all of our levy systems really are a part of a conduit. They certainly uh, provide flood, con flood protection for communities, but they're also a conduit for our water system. And so there's a very big state interest in all of our levy systems. So I, I understand the importance there of, of having a cost share. And, and many of these small reclamation districts that are responsible for maintaining uh, these levies, uh, I would say, yeah, don't have a lot of funds. They barely have enough funds to do the work they need to do every year. Um, so having that lower cost share is important. Um, however, we've kind of signaled out just this area as a 25% cost share, and that isn't the case everywhere. And completely removing the sunset, um, to me, sort of, you know, I mean, I understand the need for having a longer sunset because we need to be able to plan and have some certainty as to whether or not that money is going to be available. So maybe a longer sunset makes sense, but to completely remove that and to sort of say, hey, this area is more important than everywhere else, um, I think that's something we have to at least consider. And so, I mean, my, my question to you, I guess, would be, you know, have we talked about maybe just making this a longer sunset so that you can still have the certainty of the program that I agree has been working um, without just completely, you know, taking it off the board altogether? I think it's, I think you raise an interesting question um, when you talk about your area versus uh, the area that is further south. Uh, your area is primarily project levees, and when the terrible floods hit in the 80s and the early 90s, 
uh, there was a uh, lawsuit um, that required uh, the state to take responsibility for the maintenance of the, those areas and, frankly, uh, for the damage that occurred. Uh, that was a uh, very serious decision um, that really put the state and its interest front and center. Uh, there were millions of dollars that were poured into your area uh, in order to allow for uh, safety to remain um, the primary focus of uh, reconstruction. Uh, and that explains a great deal of why, um, you know, your area really benefited tremendously uh, from the millions of dollars. That's not the case in the Delta. Uh, the Delta has, uh, again, vast majority are uh, privately owned um, levies uh, and the ability to pay uh, over time uh, was really clearly demonstrated when the cost share was 50-50 and nothing, very, very few projects happened. That was the purpose of the sunset, to figure out um, what works and what doesn't. And the state interest in making certain that we have a workable cost share is paramount here. And the 75-25, the evidence is clear um, that the investment of the locals as well as the state increased dramatically. And we haven't had uh, a terrible incident um, that occurred in your area, uh, which was an incredibly awful, awful flood, which we can't really have again now that there are people living in those areas. So I think that it makes a, it's a successful program. Uh, it is a cost share that has worked. The program itself is good, uh, and I think it's important to just be comfortable with that. Now, is there any over you know is there any oversight over the amount? which is being proposed, well, DWR for each of these projects makes the assessment as to ability to pay. They don't give away the money. They don't match the money, you know, helter-skelter. They, in fact, do an assessment. They have to of how much money is going from, from how much money will go into these projects. So I think there's no reason, there's no reason to assume that there is never an ability to pay analysis. There is. Uh, so I think the protections are there. As for the, um, and I just want to speak to uh, the amount of money that was raised um, by the opposition. That's not correct. Um, I have uh, $12 million um, in one year, for example, not billions. I think that that's, it would be great if there were billions, frankly. It would be wonderful. And frankly, the assessment of how serious a problem we have in the Delta uh, probably could use billions, but we're never going to have billions. Uh, so it's a very worthwhile investment uh, and one that will prevent the kind of destruction that happened in your area um, in the 80s and 90s. Mr. Chairman, may I uh, I just Sure, Mr. Did you want to make a brief, brief comment? comment. Um, the Central Valley Flood Control Association concurs with the sentiment behind the Vice Chairman's uh, concern in that uh, we are working through the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan to raise the maintenance costs uh, for the remainder of the state plan of flood control. Uh, when the local agencies signed an agreement with the state of California to maintain those levees back in the 1950s and 1960s, it, that predated a lot of the environmental laws and mitigation requirements that are now in place today. So the cost of maintaining per levy mile is nowhere near. It's probably mo factors of 10 easily above what they signed up for. So we would uh, look forward to working with the vice chairman uh, in the preparation, the financing plan for the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan to try and address that, that concern. Right, and just briefly following up, um, first, I think you've made a, a good justification for why, why you're uh, pushing it this way. Uh, but just to clarify, much of my district is also uh, maintained by local agencies, not, not by the state. Um, mo actually, almost all the levies in the Sacramento Valley are maintained by local agencies who have the same problem, uh, trying to, you know, trying to provide the basic maintenance of levies with very limited resources. So 
the same issues exist there and and millions of dollars have been put into both of our districts to improve those levies under Prop uh, 1E, which is a good thing, uh, and we needed to do that. Um, but the issue still remains, I think, throughout the system, and I think we do need to be really analyzing how do we utilize those funds, uh, maximize the use of those funds to make sure that we're getting the best out of our taxpayer dollars. Nice. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gallagher. Any other comments or questions from uh, members? Seeing none. Um, I am recommending an I vote on this. Uh, Mr. Gallagher raises some good points. There's about $100 billion of investments needed in our levies. But uh, in Senator Wolk's uh, bill, we've identified a very successful program, uh, probably one of the most successful subvention programs in the state, and uh, one that started in 1973, the current mechanism for funding it in 88. And uh, you know, how many times are we going to have someone to come back with a successful program to, uh, to keep it going? when it has a, 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 great, uh, a great model for success and one, in fact, that perhaps other systems would be able to benefit learning from. Uh, so again, I recommend an I vote. Let's call the roll. The motion is due pass to the Committee on Appropriations. Levine? Aye. Levine, aye. Gallagher? Aye. Gallagher, aye. Bigelow? Dodd? Eggman? Aye. Eggman, aye. Christina Garcia? Eduardo Garcia? Garcia, I. Gomez, Harper, no. Harper, no. Lopez, Aye. Lopez, I. Mathis, Medina, Olson, Aye. Olson, I. Salas, Williams, Aye. Williams, I. Six, seven. I need one more. All right. Uh, Bill needs one more vote. We'll keep the uh, roll open for you. Thank you very much, Senator Wolk. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I have another bill. Yes, you do. That's right. 